Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings, your channel for retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. After eight years of fanfare, several high-profile investors, three rocket launches, and involvement of three of the largest space contractors in the world, high-speed communication satellite operator OneWeb has filed for bankruptcy. It is a particularly bitter pill for the investor with the largest stake in OneWeb, SoftBank Group, as the operator's filing for core protection from its creditors is a first for a company with an investment from the high-flying Japanese venture capital firm and conglomerate. The bankruptcy filing comes only one week after its third successful launch of satellites. The filing cited high costs and stiff competition leading to a cash crunch, listing liabilities and assets of more than $1 billion each in its Chapter 11 petition in U.S. Bankruptcy Court in White Plains, New York. OneWeb had been in advanced discussions early in the year for a fresh investment, but the discussions fell apart after the current global medical crisis sent markets into a tailspin. OneWeb is pursuing debtor and possession financing in the hope it can exit bankruptcy intact as a satellite operator as originally planned. The Chapter 11 filing was intended to buy time for the company to weather the turbulent credit market period caused by the current global medical emergency. OneWeb had already raised over $3 billion in debt and equity financing from shareholders, including SoftBank, Airbus, and Qualcomm, since its inception, according to earlier filings. One large creditor is Ariana Space, the general contractor responsible for OneWeb's three launches. OneWeb owes them $238 million. After a quick peek at some of our previous episodes, let's take a look at what OneWeb was promising, the economics of low Earth orbit networks, and the underlying issue of why it went bankrupt. OneWeb was founded by American entrepreneur Greg Weiler in 2012, three years after successfully raising funding for a low Earth orbit 20 satellite constellation designed to serve equatorial countries that were long underserved by communication companies. That constellation was called O3B Networks and it was successfully put into operation between 2013 and 2019. But Weiler was already thinking bigger by 2012 and in that year he founded OneWeb with the intent on raising money to launch a new constellation of hundreds of satellites that provided true global coverage and higher low latency bandwidth than that currently available from undersea cable networks and geostationary satellites. The success of O3B networks, which Weiler sold to Luxembourg-based communications company SES in 2016, attracted some big names to his new project. Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson jumped on board in the hopes of finding a market for a space plant other than tourism. Airbus joined the development team, eager to participate in the satellite construction industry dominated by Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin. And mega investor SoftBank decided to place a bet on OneWeb to the tune of a billion dollars. Investments in OneWeb eventually totaled $1.7 billion. The company was also able to float $1.6 billion in debt. The goal? Launch 624 satellites, secure sufficient land stations, bring up the broadband network, and sell bandwidth to organizations and countries that either wanted higher quality internet communications or just any reliable source of such communications. How is this supposed to work? OneWeb describes it best in a promotional video. Since the beginning, 
the World Wide Web has never been worldwide. But in 2021, a new and truly global 5G-ready network will fix that. Say you're working on the edge of the world and need to do a video call. Perhaps you're mid-ocean or mid-air. Wherever you are, you'll have a signal. OneWeb will connect your device through a customized terminal that can be as small as a briefcase and just as compact. Whatever your location, the terminal encrypts your data and sends it at high speed to our satellite fleet passing overhead. These spacecraft are radically innovative, built in our own factory at 1 50th the traditional time and cost, shrunk to the size of a washing machine, yet engineered to deliver powerful throughput. Month by month, we're growing our satellite fleet, and by 2021, we'll have not only the global spectrum rights, but the network reach to deliver truly worldwide coverage. And here's the revolutionary part. The fleet will be in low Earth orbit, 30 times closer to Earth than geostationary satellites. This gives you a stable, real-time connection with no interruption or annoying lag. What's more, our fleet always keeps moving, orbiting in a constellation design that creates seamless coverage. Each satellite uses a set of beams to cover an area the size of Alaska. Terrain is no obstacle. From its flight path and pattern, our fleet can always find your signal, so we can get you online from even the trickiest locations, with look angles that geo-satellite broadband simply can't deliver. We maintain high-grade system resilience from two ops centers using state-of-the-art ops concepts. Cloud architecture gives us powerful scalability and control remotely. For example, we can remove satellites at the end of their service life so that the only trace we'll leave in space is on your screen right now. Now back to that video call of yours. We beam your data back down to Earth to our nearest satellite network portal. Then via one of our point of presence gateways, positioned in secure locations, trusted by global providers, it re-enters the web. The journey you've just watched takes, at most, one tenth of a second. And there they are. Your video call is good to start, whether with colleagues or your family back home. So from 2021, you need never be out of signal or out of mind. OneWeb will connect you from unconnectable locations and keep you productive on the move. It will be a breakthrough year when OneWeb technology creates real human progress, connecting everywhere for everyone. The chips are all in, and the pile on the table adds up to $3.3 billion. So what is the payoff for OneWeb? Why suffer the risk of rocket launches? the hostile environment of space, and the profound technical challenges of massively redundant low Earth orbit networks. Because the payoff potential is so large. Global spending on communications runs into the hundreds of billions of dollars, and the untapped revenue potential is hundreds of billions of dollars more. Elon Musk addressed this issue when discussing recently the Starlink constellation being built by SpaceX. But the Revenue potential of launching rocket, launching satellites, servicing the space station, and whatnot, that's you know t taps out around three billion dollars a year. Um, but I think uh, providing broadband is is more like an order of magnitude more than that, probably thirty billion a year mm -hmm. um, as, as a rough approximation. Um, and we're still like probably below five percent at that point. So it's not like I want to be clear. Like it's not like Starlink is some huge threat to telcos. I want to be super clear. It is not. <laughs> Uh, in fact, it will be helpful to telcos because uh, Starlink will, will, will um, serve the hardest to serve customers that uh, telcos otherwise have trouble doing with, with landlines or even with, with uh, cell radio stations, you know, with cell, cell towers. Mm -hmm. um, 5G is, is, is great for high density situations like being here in DC or 
you know, New York, San Francisco, that kind of thing. 5G is great for high density situations, but it's actually not great for um, the, the countryside. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for rural areas, it's it's not it's not great. You need you need range, um, and so any, any any kind of sparse environment, uh, 5G is is really not not well suited. With so much money potentially to be made, isn't the risk worth the gamble? Let's go back to Elon Musk and see what he says concerning the challenges and history of low Earth orbit communications. We need to make the thing work. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's far from obvious that, I mean, it's real important to just set the stage here for LEO communications constellations. Guess how many uh, LEO constellations uh, didn't go bankrupt? Zero. Right. Zero. Mm -hmm. um, Iridium is doing okay now, but the Iridium One went bankrupt. Orbcom went bankrupt. Um, Global Star bankrupt. Teledesic bankrupt. Am I leaving anyone out? There's a bunch of others that didn't get very far that also went bankrupt. Anyway, they all went bankrupt. <laughs> So why did OneWeb go bankrupt? The company hinted at one significant factor in its filing, cost. Three launches through RKK Energia and Ariana Space ran about half a billion dollars. The first launch was only proof of concept, putting six prototypes into orbit. The next two launches put 68 production satellites into orbit. Thus, launch costs were almost $7 million per microsat. This doesn't take into account the cost of the satellites themselves, as well as the sunk cost of the research and development. Using SpaceX Starlink as a comparison, Elon Musk's company can launch 60 microsats on one Falcon 9 rocket. The list price of a Falcon 9 launch is 62 million, giving a cost of about 1 million per microsat. But the actual cost is lower, as SpaceX manufactures its own rockets and can launch them at about $37 million each. This makes the launch cost of each satellite only $620,000. With the cost of the satellite and R&D costs considered, Musk's estimate of $10 billion for the initial 4,425 satellite network seems right on target. SpaceX has already launched 362 microsats with 297 operational in the same time frame that OneWeb has operated. In contrast, OneWeb ran through $3.3 billion launching only 74 microsats and planning for another 36 in 2021. While tight credit markets certainly don't help the cause of a risky technological venture, there is little doubt that the cost parameters of the OneWeb network versus that of the SpaceX Starlink network, as well as other competing offerings from Amazon Project Hyper, Inmarsat, Intelsat, and Utilsat played a role in the rush to bankruptcy. We hope you enjoyed this briefing on OneWeb's bankruptcy and its impact on SpaceX Starlink and the rest of the LEO industry. If so, click that like button. Let us know that you want more of these types of episodes by clicking the subscribe button. Activating the bell icon will also make sure that you receive notifications of new episodes. Links to material related to this video, the BTM channel, and select previous episodes can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, where we announce all new episodes. Thanks for watching.